Hey guys, it's Megan. Since back to school is unfortunately coming up pretty soon, I thought that it would be fun to show you some easy DIY school supplies that you can make. You guys know how I feel about long intros, so without further ado, let's just get into it. The first idea that I have for you guys is this pencil holder bookmark. To make this, you'll need duct tape, a zipper, elastic, a ruler, and either a knife or scissors. Start by cutting two pieces of duct tape that are both 9 inches long. Then, place the pieces on both sides of your zipper, with the right side of the zipper facing up. Flip everything over, and then cover the sticky part with more tape. You don't really need to measure it this time, just as long as it's the same length or longer than the tape on the front. After that, flip the piece back to the front, and then cut off any excess tape. Set that piece aside, and cut another 9 inch piece of duct tape. Flip that piece over, and then put another piece on the back. Then, cut off any excess tape. Take the piece that we made earlier, with the right side facing down, and fold the tape in half on both sides. Flip it back to the right side, and then line up another piece of tape with the side of the zipper. Flip that over, and put the 9 inch piece on the back and then fold over the tape. Cut off any excess, and repeat this on the opposite side. Line a piece of tape up with the zipper, flip it over, stick the rest of the tape on the back, and then cut off any excess. If you want, you can unzip the pouch and tape down the flaps that are left on the inside. Take a smaller piece of duct tape to close up the end, place the tape above the zipper, fold it over to the back, and cut off any excess. Repeat this on the opposite side as well. Now the main part of your pouch is done, and as you can see, it can fit an unsharpened number 2 pencil pretty easily. I wanted to decorate the pouch a little bit, so I added a strip of rainbow tape on the front. The last step is attaching the elastic. Flip the pouch over, and use a hot glue gun to attach one end of your elastic. I put a small piece of duct tape over the elastic to make sure that it was extra secure. Then, put the pouch on the front of your notebook, and measure out how much elastic you'll need by wrapping it around the notebook. Once you've figured that out, slide it off of the notebook and then hot glue the opposite end of the elastic on the same way that we did before. Again, I used a small piece of duct tape over the hot glued part to make sure that the elastic was extra secure. Now you have your very own bookmark pencil holder. This holds about 5 or 6 pencils comfortably, but I'm sure that you could fit more if you wanted to. With this DIY, you'll always be able to find a pencil, and you won't have to spend 5 minutes searching for the page in your notebook. I painted clouds on my notebook cover, and I have a video on how to paint these if you're interested. This was super easy to make. And duct tape comes in so many different colors that you could make one to match every single one of your notebooks. The second idea that I have for you guys is this Great Wave inspired binder cover. For this project, you'll need watercolor or sketchbook paper, water based markers, a sharpie, paint, and watercolors. First, cut a piece of paper to fit inside of your binder. Then, sketch out the general shape of the wave with a pencil. I based my wave off of the famous painting, The Great Wave of Kanagawa, and I'm sure I'm butchering that name so I am so sorry, but you could use any picture of a wave that you want for reference. When my sketch was done, I outlined the top part of the waves with a sharpie. Then I began to color it in. I chose three different colors of my Crayola Super Tips markers, and drew curved lines in the blue part of the waves. Again, it's really helpful to use a reference photo to see which direction the line should be curving. Don't worry too much about making it perfect, as long as the lines are generally going in the same direction, it should look pretty good. You could paint the lines if you really wanted to, but I think that using markers is a lot easier. I erased any pencil lines that remained, and then I used a lighter blue marker to add details in the white part of the waves. Again. You don't really have to worry about this part too much, because it will mostly be covered with paint later. Then, I used a yellow watercolor to fill in the background. The original piece has more of a tan background, but I took a lot of artistic liberties with this. 
When the watercolor dried, I used white acrylic paint to fill in the white part of the waves. The paint blended with the blue marker spots a little bit and gave the waves more dimension. If you want this effect, I'd recommend using a thinner, cheaper paint like the Apple Barrel or Craftsmart paints. Then, I dipped an old toothbrush in some more white paint and used my finger to flick the paint off of the toothbrush, kind of like splatter painting. This is supposed to be the spray that comes off of the waves. You could probably skip this step or get the same effect using a regular paintbrush, but if you do decide to do this, make sure to wear old clothes because the paint will get everywhere. This next part is optional, but I decided to add more detail to the waves using a micron pen. To finish the binder cover, I printed out the word notes using the font Keep On Trucking. I cut that out and then used a regular number two pencil to color over the back of each letter. Then I taped that where I wanted the word to be on the page and then I traced around each of the letters. This is a great technique to use if you're like me and have terrible handwriting. Once the letters were outlined, I filled them in with some light blue acrylic paint, and then when that dried, I used a dark blue Posca pen to clean up the edges. Once everything dries, just slip the paper into your binder cover and you'll be good to go. So here's how the finished binder turned out. I personally think that it looks pretty cute. And even though it seems like there are a lot of steps, it was actually pretty easy to make. The next idea that I have for you guys is this perler bead keychain. I've really been wanting to personalize my backpack, but I don't want to accidentally ruin it. So this is what I came up with. For this project, you'll need to make two perler bead creations that are the same size and shape. It doesn't really matter what they are, just as long as they're the same size. I decided to make perler bead versions of the Great Wave and Starry Night. Each of these pieces is 15 by 15 beads. I found these designs on Pinterest, and there are a lot of famous paintings to choose from. When you're happy with your design, just iron them according to the package directions. Now that the perler beads are finished, we can work on making them into a pouch. For this part, you'll need a zipper that's long enough to go around the sides of your perler bead pieces. I used a zipper that was 14 inches. You'll also need a needle and thread. First, thread your needle and tie the two loose ends together to double the thread. Next, take one of your perler bead pieces and flip it like this. Line up your zipper with the top of the beads and start sewing. I put my thread through the zipper first and then went up through the bead. I repeated this the whole way around until the end going through the center of the bead and back through the zipper. If you know what a whip stitch is, that's what I did the whole way around. When I got to a corner, I did two stitches in the corner bead instead of one. I continued this the whole way around the square and knotted the thread once I got to the end. I shortened the zipper by doing a whip stitch 10 times around the end, like it said to do on the package, and I cut off any excess. Then, I stitched the loose ends of the zipper down using a straight stitch. To attach the other side, I threaded my needle the same way that I did before and brought it up through the inside of the pouch. Then, I brought the thread up through the corner bead of the second piece and then I stitched it on the same way that I did before, making sure that the stitches went through both the zipper and the perler bead piece. And again, when I got to a corner, I made sure to do two stitches in the corner instead of one. I did this the whole way around, and when I got to the end, I unzipped the keychain so that I could tie the end of my thread. When you're done, you should have a cute little zipper pouch that looks like this. I wanted to make this into a keychain, so I threaded a thicker piece of string through the corner where I shortened the zipper. Then I tied a double knot in the string to make sure that it was secure, and threaded it through a keychain. I tied it onto the keychain, and then I used the loose ends to tie square knots all the way down the string. If you're not sure how to make square knots, I explained how to do it in my DIY friendship bracelet video. I cut off any of the excess and used clear nail polish to seal the ends. So here's how the finished keychain turned out. I honestly love this so much and I really want to make more. I'll probably use this to hold my pencil sharpener, since that's something that I always lose, 
but you could also use it to store small things like glue sticks, erasers, or chapstick. So thank you guys so so much for watching! Make sure to leave me a comment telling me which DIY was your favorite for a shout out in my next video. And don't forget, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos just like this one. And make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok, they are both at WellerMegs. And yeah, I love you guys so so much and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!